This is the Bold of the Most podcast, where we talk with those making bold moves in business, real estate, and life. I'm your host, Trey Jacobs. Thank you for being here. Let's jump right in. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Bold of the Most podcast. My name is Trey Jacobs, and today I got my boy, Migs Fajardo. Migs, what's poppin', homie? It's good. It's good, Trey. It's good to have you on, bro. So me and Migs, we go way back. We met back in shit. What what year was it? Um, I think it was like 2012 or 13. Maybe even that. I graduated college in 2012, and I went. Yeah, so it was probably 2012. Yeah, 12 or 13. Yeah. 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 Yeah, We used to do uh, door to door sales in the mean streets of LA. Uh, and it was a grind, bro. Like we was out there in full suits, dress shoes. I'd go through a pair of dress shoes like every three weeks because your boy's big, and the streets is rough. <laughs> no, I. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy, I was man. Too, so that was fun. Yeah, we were, we were. That was a good time, man. I do kind of miss it. 2013, man. Before kids, before like the stress of being an adult, but. <laughs> Man, you kind of you're kind of blowing up lately, bro. Uh, you got the clothing brand now, Crescendo. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so decided to finally finally start, you know, the clothing brand that I've been meaning to start for years. Um, took a while to kind of come up with the type of concept I wanted, and then obviously also the name uh, that really resonated with me. Uh, I wanted something that. You know, would it's it's a passion project, but at the same time, obviously, it's a business for me now. Right. So you gotta kind of find a balance on, you know, designs, and you gotta find a balance of like making sure that you know you stay tied with the business side of of having a clothing brand. But to answer your question, what really got me started with it is I had a clothing brand back in the day, very very small, didn't really mm-hmm. take off. I had to really rework what that really meant for me. Um, so what catapulted me to finally just jump two feet in, burn the boats, uh, was me getting laid off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, from, oh, yeah. uh, from a financial institution that I've worked for, for nine years, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. Um, so that was the perfect time for me. And I think it was also a sign. I think for a lot of people that started their business, you know, can kind of, uh, relate to my story. Um, so that's kind of how it started the name crescendo, you know, it's funny. I'll, I'll tell you the real exact freaking reason how that name came about. So I was in my car, Let's I was listening it. to a Drake song trophies and you know, the song, you know? So there was a line on, I think the first verse said, he heard records on my demo, my stock be, my, my stock be blowing up like a crescendo. And I kept replaying that line after I heard it. And then I know what crescendo <laughs> means. Obviously, you know, crescendo, you know, in, in music terms means a <laughs> casual increase of intensity. Right? right. So I keep reading, I kept reading that definition and it started to hit. Started to resonate, my soul. Right? It started to really like, I started to really picture myself in that where, you know, someone crescendos their life, you know, in, in a series of gradual intensities, whether it be a struggle or whether it be through wins or losses, you know, you'll get to a certain peak. So that kind of like what the concept was of, of the brand was about, uh, how it started, it, you know, so start that, from the, bottom. The, the name just stuck, you know, now we here. You know, now we here. You know, start no, no new friends, no new <laughs> friends. Hey, all these Drake puns, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, that's tight, bro. All right, so let's let's recap real quick. Uh, you started an original clothing brand. What was it called? That first clothing brand, Lover Five. Ah, oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. I remember that one. And then you know that one kind of fizzled out, and then you got laid off from your job, and you decided to take that as an opportunity to start crescendo, but really go out like give it your all this time, right? Yeah, I, I think you know, I think that the difference this time was just like, you know, I think I wanted to better myself. I think that's right. the whole entrepreneurship thing for me, in the spirit of it all, was like you can't go half ass, you can't go one foot in, one foot out, being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, 
so in the last, you know, since October, I've, I've really learned the, 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 the true spirit of what that really means mm-hmm. of putting two feet in. And then again, like what I said, burning the boats, right? I don't know if you've read that book before, like, you know, you burn the boats, you never look back. Um, and it's, it's, it's paid, it's paid dividends, but I'm still in my infancy learning process of it all. Right. Uh, but I have learned a shit ton at this point, you know, and I've seen incremental growth, you know, just within my business you know, with my brand that, you know, we're obviously going to talk about today uh, that I, you know, I have something to share for, you know, for anyone that kind of just wants to start their own business. Um, I've seen, you know, some successes in a short amount of span. So, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you're, you're killing it recently on this one. I, I love to see it. Um, you know, you, you kind of you kind of mentioned, right, like the, the mindset thing, you can't be one foot in one foot out, right? Like you have to be to be all in. Is there any other like qualities that a person has to have in order to be successful with a clothing brand? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I'm a one man band man at the moment, right? Like I'm doing the designs. I'm doing all my shipping, I'm doing all my orders, I'm doing everything, right? right? Like from from the production, you know, I I work closely with a really, really good friend of mine that has a studio called Trantal Studios. That he does all the production there. We do all our prints there. We do all of our content creation there. You know, I think one of the biggest kind of characteristics that I, you know, that you have to have as an entrepreneur it's, you know, I've, I've heard it plenty of times it's called stick, you know, stick to itiveness. You just got to stick to it. You oh, know, yeah. like yeah. You, you really have to just stick to it. And I can't emphasize that enough. You know, I, there are days where I wake up and I start questioning why the fuck did I do this? Like, like, is this really <laughs> the right choice for me? Right. Like starting yeah. my own business. Like I, I can get a six figure job anywhere from all the, you know, the, the skill sets that I've acquired through corporate America like I can get a job very easily, but is that, is that going to be purposeful for me waking up every day, moving forward every day with my life? Right. I think this is the right time for me. That's why it kind of took the dip, you know, and I kind of just took two feet in and I go, I'm, I don't want to look back. Like I'm so focused on this, you know, and also, as you know, like you and I talked, you know, prior to this, I also am studying for my, you know, to get my real estate license. Right. So those two mm-hmm. things, in the start of the year, you know, when I do my, uh, my yearly assessment for myself was the two things that I'm going to focus on this year was building my brand and getting licensed in real estate. So, but right now the focus is on the brand. Yeah, no, you, you said it was called uh stick, stick to itiveness. Stick to itiveness. Never heard that one before, but it's basically consistency, being consistent and grit, showing up every day, doing the thing over and over again. Cause you're, I mean, I feel this, like I can relate to that so much, right? Like I'm uh, stepping into the, the multifamily space, like becoming a real estate investor, buying apartments and having people trust me with their hard earned money to invest it and make, you know, better than average returns. Uh, I have to show up as that person every single day because up, you know, I'm 35 years old. Uh, up until I was 32, people knew me as something completely different. It's the same thing, right? Like you just started a clothing brand, but you know, you probably, were, you, I think we're the same age. Um, up until 32, people knew you for something completely different. And if I had to guess, I'd say it was, you know, having a broke ass jump shot, but. Um, ah. <laughs> Look at my, look at my highlights. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you're not following migs on instagram my, my guy does be posting his highlights bro it's hilarious <laughs> and only the makes only the makes man only the makes, only the makes. <laughs> so i know that's but exactly like, you are showing up every day as a baller right but now you got to show up every day as the dude who has a dope clothing brand so that when people see you that's what they think of right so i feel that i feel that um let's talk about the brand though describe the brand describe the merchandise describe the vibe like how i mean if you guys are watching i'm currently wearing a little little something something from capsule one like capsule one first round break it down break it down hey guys my company page capital group is actively sourcing and buying multifamily deals if you're looking to put your money to work, gain some tax efficiencies, and grow your portfolio while we do all the heavy lifting, go to pagecapitalgroup.com backslash invest. That's page, P-A-I-G-E, capitalgroup.com backslash invest. 
and someone from our team will reach out. Now, back to the show. Oh, wow. I'm on my second capsule, obviously. Uh, capsule one was, you know, it was a, it was a good test run. Um, you know, the, the whole focus was kind of gather analytics and see how kind of people feel the design, stuff like that, and then either pivot or continue to do it, right? So it's, it's kind of like a, you just do a lot of tests, especially when you're brand new. Um, the cool thing is, it's like, I, 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 I have a big circle as far as like the dance scene, the basketball scene, you know, in, in California. So I, I tend to use my connects in order to kind of infiltrate, you know, that circle to, um, to advertise my brand, to market my brand. Right. right. So the brand again, Crescendo, I, I just feel like there's so many ways I could go with it. I could go with it with music. I could go with it with, with dance, with, with sports, right? Um, and also, to me, it, I could take it as a Lux type of brand name as well. You know, in the future, I, I would want some sort of, like, a fragrance line, you know, with that name. You know, I thought that would be cool, right? Mm -hmm. But I have to start somewhere. So right now, I have tees and hoodies, high quality, high quality t-shirts and hoodies. I mean, that's that t-shirt that you got on like that's a heavy set that's a heavyweight tee right this t-shirt like, is a is a hoodie bro this shit is so thick exactly like I'm, it's not it's not a it's not a thin t-shirt even my hoodies you know it's a heavyweight hoodie right? right i wanted to focus on high quality so when consumers buy it not knowing what the brand is about because brand new they go oh okay he's got quality right like the, the first thing is quality the second that's thing smart. that i want to touch on is like you know, just the little, the little things like the thank you cards that, you know, that get shipped out with the packaging, right. With a small note on it right now. So, you know, it's, it's those little things. And, you know, my second capsule, I call it the rise beyond limits capsule, you know, because you could break through any boundaries, you know, in order for you to elevate yourself. Right. So that was kind of the mentality of the second capsule. I kept it very minimalistic. Um, and then you'll see the designs if you look at the website, if you look at the Instagram page, like it's very cohesive to right. what my brand is about, right? I mean, you've seen it. So that's kind of where like the direction is going, uh, more so like minimalistic luxe wear that is affordable that you could like really rep and speak to you. That's kind of where I'm going with it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's and that's like a really good way to sum up the overall vibe of yeah. Crescendo. Um, and no joke, bro. Like, I won't lie to you. This is the first time I put this shirt on. Like, I had to. I know. Yeah, you said you lost it too. Like... I did, bro. It was in the closet. The cleaners came, and then they moved it, and then oh, I found yeah. it like under some stuff. But but I got it right. And this, yeah. I mean, it goes hard, bro. It's thick. Yeah, you know, it. it's long enough. The sleeves are good. Like, I'm not That's a small human being. One, by the way. That's the best. Was it really? Yeah. The yeah, cost no. line. yeah. Always, oh, always line. cross the line. What's that mean? So like when I was, you know, when I was trying to find an image, so when I saw that image, right, I was like, well, he kind of, he kind of stepped the line on, he kind of stepped the line, right? Like that, that free throw <laughs> line, that free throw line, like dunk by Jordan, right? He, he stepped on the line, right? Right. But, you know, anyone that, anyone that made a difference, anyone that made an impact in, 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 in the world, whether it be through history, politics, like sports, like they almost never gave in to the status quo. They always stepped the line in order to break barriers. That kind of was the, the message that I was going for with that particular T design was like, you know, don't be afraid to cross the line because you never know what you could break into, right? So that was the, the, the mindset that I had when I was kind of thinking about the design for that particular T-shirt. So, you know, yeah. it, was a play, it was a play on, on Jordan stepping over the line on on that dunk contest, he obviously won the dunk contest, right? Now, and we've never seen anyone do that. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. J did it, but I'm saying like for him to cock back that that dunk, right? Like during that time when he did that dunk contest, it was it was pretty new. So right. that was kind of like the mentality that I had. How did you get this image? Like, how can you use this image, or can you? I don't know. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, if I get the cease to cease letter, be, that's when you know I'm doing well. So, you know, that's all yeah, I have. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, how the hell did he get Jordan? Yeah, did Jordan sign off on this? Like, I mean, there's so many, like, you know, there's so many, like, imitations, right? So, yeah. Like, it's I a mean, gray you, look area. At, you look at every brand, right? So, yeah. Yeah. 
What is a what is a capsule? I always wondered that. Capsule one, capsule two, capsule three. What is it? It's that? just a collection. It's just a collection. Like you know, I just wanted to call it a capsule because it's it's a small. It, it, I don't have a full collection, right? Like if you go in New York Fashion Week, like you know Balenciaga, Gucci, like even Kith and Supreme, right? They have full collections. They have bags. They have they have a you know from top to bottoms accessories. That's a full collection. I don't have that. Right, right, yeah, right now yeah. I have a very, very small, minimalistic Offering. collection, so I call it a capsule. Yeah, is that is that in the works though? Are you planning on? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So like moving into all that other stuff. Yeah, you know the the goal is to obviously expand the product line to cut and sew. You know, expand the product line into jackets, um, sweats, pants, bags. Again, fragrance. You know, that's one thing that I really kind of want to jump into is fragrance. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be really cool to have that. I think that's a big, you know, differentiator for me. And you, you know, said cut and sew? Yeah, cut and sew, meaning like you're actually physically, desi- it, you don't, you're not buying blanks, right? You're, you're actually the one manufacturing and designing mm. the clothes, you know? You're cutting okay. the pieces, you're sewing it together, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, well, you know what? I'm really curious though. Like you started a brand, right? So from start to finish is as high level or as detailed as you want to get. Let's talk through these different steps. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume that the first step is having a website and a payment processor. Uh, so where, what does that look like for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I have, um, I have a Shopify account. So my website is, is ran through uh, Shopify. So you know, Shopify kind of gives you access, you know, uh, as far as payment processing, they, they have all that set up for you. So for someone that wants to start an e-commerce business, Shopify is a great tool as a beginner. You know, yeah. uh, the customer service is amazing. You know, you can chat with them uh, just based on kind of like your monthly plan with them. So um, it's pretty easy. You know, they I pretty much built my whole website through Shopify. Right. And right, right. You're, you're, I'm able to upload all the photos that I, I do when it, you know, after I do a photo shoot, um, you could edit it. Uh, I mean, I feel like my website is pretty clean, clean for being a rookie <laughs> clothing brand. You know, uh, it was definitely way better from the first capsule than, you know, it is now. Right. So, um, so what that's, is it? What's the, what's the URL? Uh, the crescendo brand.com. Crescendobrand.com. All right. I'll drop that into the description. Yeah. For show. Yeah. For show. Okay. Shopify. How much does Shopify cost? Uh, I think you, when I signed up, I think I got either the first one or the first three months for free to try it out. Huh. Actually, I think they're still doing, um, they might still be doing that, but I think I'm paying about $39 a month. You That's know, not bad. And there's, there's a bigger plan too, but I'm, I don't need the bigger plans right now because I'm still you know, I'm still kind of building my brand, even though like I've made some, I've made a splash. Like I, I don't need to do that right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Okay. So we got the website, right? Next, we got to come up with some designs. So how do you design a hoodie or a t-shirt front, back, all of that? So that's, that was a challenging part for me. As you know, like you and I have been friends for like what, almost 20 years, like right? Like 12 years, 15 years. That's, I was never a designer, you know that. Like you and I, our expertise is in sales, right? <laughs> like we push products. For us to have the product be designed for us, that's completely a new territory for me. The, the good thing, again, having just the right circle of people, um, again, like one of you know, the people that I, I was fortunate enough to have that's consulting me at the same time, like one of my best friends that, also owns a studio that I'm part of, you know, for my production, like he really pushed me to learn, you know, Photoshop. He's like, Hey, (laughs) like, if you want, if you want people to really feel you, like you got to learn just the basic of Photoshop. Right. But then from there, like you kind of just evolve, but like he, like he forced it in my head, like in order for you to design, like you have to learn this. So I did. It took me months and months and months to learn Photoshop ah. as, as I get comfortable, you know? So, but you just find inspiration everywhere, right? Like that tea that you were wearing, just going back to that, like I was just, I think I was scheming through, I have a, I have a book of sneakers. That picture popped up and I go, I kept looking at it and I go, I can do something with this, right? I just got to find right. it, you know? 
I just gotta alter it. And then, but the new capsule, that was all completely all new design, right? Like very minimalist. Say, I do have inspiration as far as like certain brands that I follow. So you also, I also get my inspiration from that, right? Mm -hmm. Like Essentials, Represent, Supreme, All Saints, like those brands like that are been influential for me, from, you know, for me, because I also wear them, right? But I go, okay, but I could also do this, but with my own twist, you know, and hopefully it'll reach people and it'll affect people in the way that those brands affected me. Right, right, right. The design is hard, right? Like what advice would you give to somebody who like just isn't a designer, right? Like you were able to pick it up and you've done a great job, but some people may not be as, um, uh, you know, able to pick it up as quickly as you have, right? So what advice do you have for them? Watch a lot of YouTube videos. Just again, stick to itiveness. Just, just keep at it. You know, like you can't underestimate that type of skill set and that type of kind of will power you just just stick to it. I, it, it. Again, it took me like almost half a year to even get comfortable. And I'm still learning at this point, right? When yeah. it comes to Photoshop. So, and I still have a lot to learn, right? But my designs are getting better every time. Like, cool thing is like I have two to three capsules ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Because I've right. gotten confident and comfortable from the first two. And as I go through designing every day. I love it. I love it. You know, it's funny too. Like I used to do sales. We used to do sales together. You know, I'm yeah. a designer now. Like I design for I just digital stuff. Right. But yeah, even it. as a designer, I hate Photoshop. It's not my jam. It's just not for me. So yeah, you know, but there's, there's other kudos tools. to you. Yeah, kudos right. to you for still like picking that one up, bro. Like, shit. Man, All right. Great. So now we got the design, right? We got the design. We, we, we have the, the mock-ups. Now we got to print this stuff, right? And you were saying that you, your boy has a print shop in the studio and he's letting you use it. Can you speak to that relationship and what somebody might expect if they don't have a friend who has all this uh, equipment? Yeah, I mean, shout out to Train of Thought Studio, right? Obviously. Um, but one more, say, one more, say one more time, what's it called? Train of Thought Studios. Where are they located in? California, Southern California. Oh yeah, shout out to them. Yeah. So like, I mean, it, we do everything there. You know, again, printing there, content creation there, everything. Um, so the first thing, so after, after the design, then now you, you got to print samples, right? I mean, you mm. got to make sure the samples come out the way you want it. And if not, you got you to gotta reprint it. Sometimes things have happened where the, the files doesn't transfer correctly to the actual production. So you got to make changes, right? So that's happened to me already, you know? So those are like the, the, the stresses because that could, that could put you back a day or two from the production end to the content end, right? Because after all the samples are done, my next step is, okay, I need models for these, right? Now samples are done, production's done. Now you know you have the right files for it. What's the next step? You got to create the content for it because people, people got to see, people got to buy it. Right. But before you, before you even shoot the content, you got to think about what's your concept for the content. Right. Like what type, like what type of vibe you trying to go for. Right. Before, before we get into that, before we get into that, I want to talk about the printing processes a little bit more. Right. So you send your file down to this machine and, It's like, what do you have to like, I've seen printing on videos, right? Like, I don't know, but it's always like they lay this, the, um, the shirt down and then are they like putting something where we, we just full solely focus on digital printing. So So we have a a big digital printer. So it's like a brother digital printer is what we have. Okay. Right. So we send the file out and then you pretty much make sure that your placements are correct. And then kind of just like a screen print, right? But the screen print, you manually have to press the paint, right? That's yeah, what you've know, seen. Right? So right. new age stuff now, which benefits us a lot better because we're print to order. The cool thing about that is we don't have to stock a pile of inventory, right? So when we receive the order, right, we'll just order what, however many stuff we need to order. And then we just print it because it's digital. It's, it comes out so fast. You know, yeah. so how like long that, did this shirt take to print? That's digital. Yeah. It's all digital. Like how, how long did it take to print though? Like after the, like a minute or two. Really? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Hmm. That's dope, man. Okay. All right. And it's high quality. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just being real. Like, you know what I mean? So, like. Yeah. It doesn't feel. It doesn't feel like it's like you know how you some of your shirts you wash them like six, seven, eight times and it starts yeah. like peeling and flaking. I don't think this one's gonna do that. That's what, no. at least that's what it feels like. Yeah. yeah, that's dope though. Um, is it a big machine? It's a big machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. cool. All right, so now we got the uh, the samples done. We are ready to start shooting the content. That's the marketing, right? So you're talking about putting together together a marketing concept. I mean, how does that ideation process work? I mean, it's just like whatever. Same thing. Just whatever inspiration you get, right? Like, so for me, my process is I have a mood board. Right. So I'll go through Pinterest, I'll go through Google, I'll go through YouTube, I'll go to go through TikTok and I'll just type in keywords like photo shoot inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, mood boards. So like like those things. And then I'll pick the ones that I, I like. And then from there, I'll kind of just, you know, oh, this is going to be the concept for my for my photo shoot. Right. Let me give you a full example. The last photo shoot for the second capsule, I had five models, you know. So I had to strategically put every single model in certain, um, in, in certain products and certain styles, knowing their height, like, you know what I'm saying? Like if yeah. they're tall, they're shorter, right. Who will mesh mesh well, as far as a duo or a triple or all of them together, like those things like plays a part on what makes a really, really good content, you know? Do you like storyboard, uh, all of your, your photo and video shoots? Not necessarily, I don't have a storyboard. I have like a mood board. So like, for example, on okay. Pinterest, like I'll save certain inspirations that I have. Like, oh, I want my models to post like these. You get uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll have yeah. like, I literally like a big whiteboard and I'll post like my, like how I want the photo shoot would look like. And then right. when the models came in, I go, hey, I want you in, in this. I want you in this. I want you in this, you know? So, yeah. That's crazy, man. You got five models too. That's Oh, bro, you're big time. Where do you get the models from? The homies. Oh, for real? Yeah. yeah. But, like, but, but they're also like friends that, like, again, you have to be strategic, you know, like, because your, your brand has to have a certain look, right? right. So, like, you want to make sure that it, it speaks to an that audience look. that you want to reach. So, right. yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. And the homies be doing it for the low or do they even charge you or you just, you give them the, the clothes that they're modeling? How does that yeah, work? So like, you know, as a growing company, right? Like, you know, yeah, obviously like, I'll give them like, you know, I'll give them like the merch. Right. And I say, if they want to do it, they want to do it. If not, you know, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? So, but oh, yeah. again, like my circle, my circle is big enough that you'll find somebody. It's not, it's not hard to find. It's not hard to find models. Oh yeah, bro. That's sick, man. That is sick. Um, yeah, I'd do it for you, you know, but you know, I might not be, oh, I might not fit the brand. Know. You already know. I was like, I need that. I need to bro, talk. give me that, give <laughs> me that three X, give me that three X t-shirt, that hoodie, bro. Cause you know, I done gained about a hundred pounds since I was in LA. It's oh crazy. God. Shit is crazy. All right. So now, all right, we got the marketing. Actually, no, we've got the content. Now we actually have to start marketing it, right? Like how does that work? So that's another, that's the. I feel like the most crucial piece, right? Because you've done the legwork, right? From right. the concept to design, design to production, production to content concept, right? And then you did the shoot. And then from the shoot, you go, how am I going to sell my shit? Right? Like, <laughs> I, I, I can't just rely on my circle, right? Like my friends and family. Yeah, they're cool. Like, they'll, they'll buy your first two to three capsules to support you that's, right. that's going to happen organically right but you don't you don't want to rely on that right like you now the real work begins this is the yeah. thing that i've learned from justin that he's really kind of like taught me you know it's like you've done all that legwork makes like now it's time to like really show what your brand is about through through paid ads you know so how can you reach people that you haven't reached before? So our strategy is you, we make the content for the ads. We make dope content 
so the ads will pick it up and and send it out to the people that are, are actually might buy your shit, right? right? Right. Because if your concept is good enough, if your brand concept and your val your brand values are good enough, that's gonna speak to the audience. So you don't have to worry about that. It's reaching those audience. It's getting to those audience. So get now, in front of them. You can get in front of them. Whether like whether it be you know it, reels give you. A couple options you either want them to go to your instagram page or you want them to go to your website right so all you do is you just test the marketing for example i have right now i think 18 posts total on my page on my instagram page mm -hmm. i'm constantly running anywhere from six to ten of those uh posts because right now i have to gather data Right. Is that seeing, when you say running, are you just boosting those posts? Are you exactly, actually going I'm, into I'm, like yeah, I'm boosting, I'm paying to boost those posts. Okay. And then I'm I'm running I'm running data on those, seeing which one works. Right. So because if you have a business account, it'll tell you how much it costs per click, right? Let's say I buy a ten dollar advertisement, right, for a particular post. You want that post to be like less than 15 cents per click right? Or per profile view, right? Because if you're spending 50 cents or a dollar per click, that's kind of expensive and your budget is 10 bucks. So you're telling me you're paying Instagram to give 10 people to go to your site instead of a hundred people. Right. right. So you want it as low as possible, right? You want it below like 15 cents, you know, on, on your insights, you know, right. when it shows you how much it is you're spending for, per click. What about like, all right, so I get boosting the post and I've seen that option. I'm going to do it eventually. But what about like Facebook, like ad manager, right? Do you do any work over there? So I'm, I get right now I'm still pretty brand new. So my main okay. marketing um, strategy right now is just reels. I just, I just made my TikTok account a couple of days ago for Crescendo. Oh, for real? Yeah. So man, it's you're mad late. You're mad late. Right, TikTok exactly. is like, so, come on, son. Well, I just, I, so like, you know, but I have to put all my business like entity, right. On, on that, in order for me to be able to link my website on it, right. And all the products and stuff like that. So um, that's the second phase of it. Also, in addition to just the paid ads, one of the things that, you know, Justin and train of thought studios have really emphasized is the email marketing, right? Yeah, so I big. just signed up for Omnisend which sends automatic, e automatic emails once you go on the site as a welcome, right? If you viewed a product and you didn't put it on the cart, you did put it on the cart, but you left the cart and then you're at checkout, right? So I have four emails that get sent out to the person in order for them to actually get converted to a sale. So right. that's, the, that's the stuff that I'm adding on to the brand repertoire as far as you know marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of like where the brand's at currently. Real quick, guys, if you're enjoying the show and want to help us grow, share, shoot us a five star rating and follow the show on Apple or Spotify. My goal is to continue to grow and get bigger and bigger guests on the show to reach more like minded real estate investors and help everyone be more bold and build more wealth. Now back to the show. No, bro, I love it. Those emails are powerful too. Powerful. I'm in the process. I'm powerful. setting up my own CRM. I have a high level yeah, account powerful. and it's just like the automations and things that you can do like that to like recapture people. I mean, in my world, it's a little bit different, right? You're yeah. working with uh, clothing. I'm working with, you know, accredited investors and yeah. big ass apartment buildings typically. So, but nevertheless, all that, like, it's just powerful. So, you know, that's dope, bro. Um, I love to hear it. I love to hear it. What about the shipping part, right? So let's say you've gone through all of that. The ads work, right? You just got a hundred dollar sale, right? They ordered uh, two hoodies, right? How you? What does the process look for you to receive that order and to make sure that it gets out in a timely manner? Yeah, so you know, we Shopify sets everything up so easily for you, you know. So yeah. everything, everything's in Shopify. Right? You know, I think um, I have a link through like UPS or FedEx, you know, and then it gets tracked, you know, from the moment that. From the moment that we print the shipping label, it tells a it tells a consumer like you've seen it, like you you've gotten it, like right, like oh you're 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 about to ship, and then when it ship, it gets another email sent out to you, and then you know oh your order's on the way, right? So I mean right. you get you get the the notifications, the updates as well as a consumer, right? So I'm not 
too worried about that that part that piece of uh of the business you know like, i think i saw today on your story was it your story or real you you were packaging up like yeah must have been like 20 orders man like you have to do all that yourself and you know get up make sure everything's yeah, like, correct right, like right now, you know like i'm doing everything like i'm I'm the one taking the tags out and putting my own labels in it, you know. Hey, so, makes a stock man. boy. But that's that's, that's all you got to do. But again, I'm a <laughs> one man band man, you know. Remember that Swiss Beats song? <laughs> so, Swiss Beats, yeah. You know, right, um, but it's it's I'm very dope. fulfilling because as a as an owner right now, right, that is a one man team. Like I have to know every single part right now, and I think that's one thing that I wanted to put on myself is. I want to know every single part of the business. So when yeah. I do have a team, I understand where everything's going going to. And then they can't tell me, oh, it went. Like, no, no, no. No, it didn't. Like, I know how that works because I started that, you know? Right, right, yeah. right, right. Anything else involved? I mean, I feel like we went from A to Z in the process. Did I miss anything out there? It's like social media growth, I think. Um, you oh, know, that's I mean, right. My man, Mix, you are blowing up on social media. I forgot. I mean, how many followers have you grown in the last week? I uh, like maybe like close to 500, you know? I, that's I just insane, bro. It's, I mean, that's seven days, right? Like about a week. Um, it's, it's crazy. It, the last time you and I spoke over the phone, it was like, hey, this is my follower count. And then like now it's my follower count. It's like seven days ago. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. It's, like, it's nuts. It's nuts. I think, like, again, I think a big component of that is the type of content that we've created for the brand, right? right. It, it, it really does speak. So, and pushing that content on a daily basis. And then one thing that I've learned so far, you know, that kind of hit home was who gives a fuck about if you spam the entire, you know, your social media followers? Like, I don't have a presence right now. So the more presence I have, the better it is. So right. I'm posting about anywhere from actual posts, maybe two to three times per day on the actual post. And then on the stories, I'm reposting that post and then I'm posting a, a few more, right? Yeah. Really get an engagement. And then on my personal, what do I do? I repost all of it. those posts on my personal account, right? right? So there's a lot of... And then my friends would repost those on their personal accounts. So there's a lot. I think that's a big part of my growth lately. Not only that, and I will, you know, I will say this. The second biggest thing is the old school guerrilla marketing, just like how we did our door to door sales. I would personally DM every single person that I have on my contacts. And I go, hey, just launched my second capsule. You know, any support would help. Like, comment, reshare, a small purchase. You know, anything would help, right? That gained me about a hundred followers just based off of that. Just oh, based, for real? just based off sending about you know thirty to fifty DMs a day, right? Really? To my circle and to anybody that likes or follows or commented on the crescendo page, I am sending that DM to them. So. That just like how we were taught, like every single door matters, right? When we were doing yeah. door to door, every single That's door matters. It doesn't matter so what smart. it is, right? Like you have to do that guerrilla market. You have to go back to that basics, the old school ways, even in the social media world. That's one thing that I appreciated from what you and I did back in the day, because we had that mentality, right? Like right. That every single person matters. That's what's yeah. up, man. I feel, you know, this is basically a masterclass on how to start your own clothing brand. I mean, God, man, you put in the work, man, and and you're seeing the reward. I mean, yeah, okay. you're you're t you're telling me that you know you, your marketing budget, you've already broke even on that, and we're like what uh, a couple days into you know. Well, the I launched the second castle this past Saturday, right? Yeah, so it's, it's a six week, day. Yeah, right? That's right. Week, yeah. That's super impressive, man. That's super impressive. And then your social growth, I think, is an attestation that you're moving in the right direction. Um, <clears throat> so curious, though, like, who are you modeling yourself after, both the brand and your personal brand, right? And if you say FUBU, I'm going to fight you. No, I'm just kidding. FUBU was tight. FUBU no, was tight, man. FUBU was the shit back in the day. Come on, let's be real. I like the old fives back in high school, man. The old fives, that's right. <laughs> old fives back in high school, man. <laughs> Who do I, who do I model my brand? I don't know. Like I, for me, like I don't want to model it, model it based on anybody. Like I want it to be me, 
you know like i want i want the my brand to personally speak to people that really feels it you know i think that's kind of like my whole attitude about that question like why would i want to emulate it? yes i have people brands have inspired me for sure 100 percent. brands have brands have inspired to start this thing right but to emulate someone I'd rather be different. Like I'd, I'd rather stand on my own than to emulate someone, you know, and, and copy from someone. Yeah. You could say like, Oh, you took this from this. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the message is different. You know, like my concept is different, you know? Yeah. You could say, you could argue like, Oh, you took the design from this particular brand that it looks like this particular brand. Sure. Right. Because Wait, they made an impact is- on me. Right. What is art, but borrowing from a whole bunch of different concepts and coming up with something that you, are, exactly. are are attracted to or, or drawn to right and I, I i hear that so what who are those brands for you i mean you said kith and supreme earlier who else obviously like you know big was like our essentials right like nike's a big one for me you know right. uh, <clears throat> you know growing up you know <laughs> I was wearing Sean John a lot. Like Sean John was like my main back brand. in the day. Back you were wearing Sean John back yeah, in the Philippines. Like, no, here, fool. Like, oh my, my like, bad, bro. My bad. That's weird. Like Sean John was the thing. Like I remember my two, my two favorite <laughs> brands back in high school: Sean John and Nietzsche. Like that was wow, that was, that was bro. Cool. Those two were my favorite yeah, brands like, of all time, right? And then you grow into Stussy, <laughs> right? And then you grow into that. You grow into Stussy. You know, even I remember Kid when Kid Robot came out. I was like kid robot out with like all the all over prints, right? You mm. know, so like those old school brands, you know, um, yeah. And then obviously <laughs> brands started growing, right? And as you as you and I grow older and become more, a little bit more mature, you know, um, you know, I, I tend to go to the Ralph Lauren route, the the Zara's, the the All Saints, the John Barbados, right? Like, oh, you fancy, bro. I yeah. shop at Old Navy, bro. Jake I wear, Fruit, you know, I wear. I have like, I probably have like twenty black shirts, and they either Old Navy or Gap t-shirts, bro. I am not oh, nowhere man. near as fancy as you, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> um, hey, do you remember those? You remember that SpongeBob shirt where he was wearing those Jordans and like the yeah. gangster SpongeBob's and all that? Yeah. Were you rocking those back in the day? Is that a big I inspiration? That. I don't think I had. You never that. did. No, <laughs> there's a mall here in Texas, bro. I went there and it's, this mall is like hood, like hood, hood. And they, they still have those freaking shirts in there, man. I couldn't even believe it, man. She was crazy. They're, they're cheap too, like fourteen ninety nine. I should have bought some. Remember the South Poles? It's the South Poles. No, I never wore South Pole, man. Damn. Like, you know, the bottom on streetwear back in the day. Yeah, right? Like that and those remember the yeah, polo? Because people know you got them from JC Penny, bro. Like <laughs> Oh man, that's yeah. wild, bro. All right. Wow. So uh there's a lot of clothing brands, right? Yeah. Like a lot. Everybody has a clothing brand. I have a clothing brand, right? Like it, I ain't never made a sale, but I got one. But how do you how like how are you positioning yourself in this crowded space? I think, I mean, great, great question to bring up. Um, and I appreciate that question. I think for me, it's more so you ju- I just got to stay consistent with like what I really believe in, you know, the, the, the successful clothing brands that I've seen really elevate themselves in the last like five to 10 years. Um, I think they just stay consistent to who they, who they are. So you know? are you. So I think for me, it's, it's just the, the message will always constantly be you know, I'm aiming all the designs, all of the, the wording is to invoke emotion as far as elevating yourself, right? And, you mm-hmm. know, getting you to crescendo to your higher path, you know? So, like, that's kind of will always be the message, right? And, again, if, if everyone's feeling that and fuck with me, perfect, you know? Like, the cool thing is, it's like, I'm in a stage where I can test a lot of stuff, I can make the mistakes, and I can, I can tweak them. Right. right. Like I, think, I think that's like, that's the best thing. The, the clothing brands that are kind of just like stay stagnant, I feel like are the ones that kind of just give up, you know, or are just doing this to, to make money. Like that there's not really a bigger purpose for what they're, what they're doing it for. You G- know? Give me an example of a clothing brand like that. I don't necessarily like, I'm, I'm saying there's so many, like you, you just go on Instagram, right. And like, mm. you just go through your pages and 
all these clothing brands will pop up on mm-hmm. your feet, right? And it's like, okay, what it, is that the same one than the last one that I just kind of popped up on? People probably feel the same way about my clothing brand, right? But again, I'm in a, I'm in a stage where I can test stuff out. I can see what works. I can see what, what doesn't work, right? And I can always pivot, you know? But the one thing that's never going to change is what I believe in and like what my identity is for my brand will be. You know, that'll never change. You know, yeah. it'll always be crescendo. It'll always be to the higher path, right? So. How does your personal brand tie into the brand that you're building in crescendo? Well, you, you've known me for a minute, you know, like I've always, you know, as personally for myself, like self-development is key for me, right? Like right. that's always what I believe in. Like there's always something to get better at. There's always something to, to pursue, right? The constant pursuit of perfection, you know, for yourself. Um, taking accountability when you make mistakes, like do you repeat it? Do you not? Right? Like there's, I'm always, I'm always in a crescendo of, of improvement, right? Like that's, that should be someone's life goal. It's like, you can't stay stagnant at one place. Like you got to either make a difference or you got to step out. Right. Either make a difference for yourself or make a difference around the people around you. The right. people around you. So that's kind of, oh, you know me, like that's always kind of been my thing. Right. Like I'm always trying to find ways to gain new skill sets, you know, in order for me to be able to add more value to myself and to everyone around me. So kind of on that same page, right. Starting the second clothing brand and like growing as a person uh, by doing so. What are some of your biggest lessons learned um, up until this point? She, like, <laughs> like, I mean, if I'm gonna be real, like, uh, entrepreneurship ain't easy. Like, you right. know, that was, I think that was one thing. Like, you, you'll wake up. There's days that you're not gonna want to do it. Like, and you know, but you, you just have to stick to it. Like, I think that's been the biggest thing for me. It's the fact that like you're investing all these money, right? Because you're investing in yourself. You're jumping two feet in. You don't know if it's gonna pan out or not. So there, there will be doubts every fucking day. There are gonna be doubts that's gonna you know seep into your mind, into your soul, into your heart, trying to push you. You may want to get a different option, right? Mm-hmm. But those are the challenges you have to overcome. Those are the those are like the the mental stuff that you have to endure yeah. in order for you to be successful. Like I trust me, me and Justin, we, like, we've had fights about just financially with my brand on how to get it, but just trusting processes, trusting someone that has done it for X amount of years. And I've seen the, that's the growth of that particular brand. And he's giving me the fucking blueprint. The fuck, Like, why would I not fucking trust that shit? And, right. and ever since, and the fact that I trusted the blueprint, I'm following it. You, you even spoke to it. You're seeing the growth of the brand organically, even in just the last week since you and I have spoken, since right, I released right. the capsule on Saturday, right? So that's kind of where I'm at with my brand, you know, because you just have to stick to it as an entrepreneur. That's one of the biggest things is stick to it. Yeah. Things. And I've been, you know, prescribed to the to Tony Robbins a lot lately. And he calls that, you know, living with absolute certainty, right? Like whenever there's stuff that like absolutely knowing what you're gonna be and then tying the emotion to where you can feel what it's like and what it's gonna yeah. be like once you hit that, once you hit that pinnacle, whatever it is, right? So those self doubts creep in, fucking grab onto that, you know, pull it in close and just know that you you can and you will. And just live with absolute certainty. It's something that I struggle with. I, I'll be real, right? Like I'm in a space that is extremely competitive. I am literally asking people for fifty, a hundred thousand dollars to invest in apartment building, something a lot of people don't know about, right? So knowing that I am a great steward of money and I know how to underwrite these deals and just knowing with absolute certainty where I'm gonna be in the next two, three, four, five years, uh, it's definitely helping a lot. So yes. And that mindset will get you to that point, right? Like you just said it, you're, you're asking these investors for millions of dollars. I have the same challenge, just asking somebody for $39 to buy a t-shirt. 
You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, it, it's two different, yeah. it's two different spectrum, it's, right? Right. However, the challenges are exactly the same, right? But and it's so and it's so funny, right? But it's, it's so crazy, right? true. It's so it's true. Crazy. Right. It's crazy. But um, it, it's what you're doing and what I'm doing. I think the key component of of where you're at in your industry and where I'm at in my industry is trust is is building trust. Yo, no, no fucking buy a forty dollar fucking T-shirt if they don't trust the brand. If they if they never had any emotional connection to it. Right. Right. Say no, no like and trust, right? Like it's right. the same thing for all the way across the board. I mean, shit, with anything, anything that involves money or transaction, there's a certain level of trust. There's a certain level level of knowing, and there's a certain level of likeness that has to be had in order right. for that transaction to take place. So, right. yeah, bro, it makes total sense. We'll have to, um, you know what? I'm gonna have to have you on in like six months, a year, because I want to follow up, bro. You, wh- how many followers do you have right now today? Uh, I mean, get about 500 followers like last week. Like, I'm almost at 1k, but like, I only released my brand. Like, all right, there you go 1,000, 1,000. That's the benchmark, right? When yeah, you come yeah. back on in six months or in a year, whenever it is, we'll we'll have that number 1,000. And if it's not 20k, you you fucked up, you dropped the ball. All right, Damn, so don't all right let me, yeah, don't let me down, bro. Let, don't let me down. What's Damn. your Instagram? What's your brand's Instagram? So it's at the crescendo brand.com. And and for my uh, my listeners who can't spell, how do you spell crescendo? C R E S C E N D O. There we go. There we go. What's your uh, What's your Instagram? Where can the people find you at? My personal Instagram. Hell yeah, it's, man! It's at underscore J dot M I G S. Your at- starts with an underscore. You yeah, had to be different. Just the one to J Miggs, bro. Like <laughs> you put the it. underscore I, at the end. I don't score the front, dude. I don't score the front, bro. The, the underscore at the back was taken, so I was at the underscore. Uh, <laughs> Maybe mad. Uh, all right, man. Yeah, well, you know what? I appreciate this, bro. Like, literally, you gave a master class for starting a brand from start to finish, and I definitely appreciate you for that. Uh, before we wrap up, though, do you have any any last words? It sounds like ominous. But any, <laughs> any, any last words? Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, like, buy my stuff. Hey, yo, come support. Like, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, you feel, you know, if you feel the brand, check it out. Um, but you know, for anyone that's trying to be an entrepreneur, like, again, I think I said in the first, you know, question when you asked me, like, just stick to it. That's it. You know, that's stick it. to it. Like, that, that will that will seep in. But the more you stick to it, the longer you'll go. So I love it, bro. One more time for the people in the back. What's the uh what's the brand name? Crescendo. Crescendo. What's the website? Uh the crescendo brand.com. That took way too long, bro. The crescendo brand.com. Awesome. Well, listeners, that's all we have for today. I'm Trey Jacobs. This is Jose Miggs Fajardo. We out of here. I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>